we've been doing a lot of work in Scotland in the past few years to look at some of the fundamental building blocks of growing a really strong and vibrant Scottish economy. What we've tended to do is to focus on those things like innovation, or we focused on new products, or we focused on um, exporting into new markets. The bit that's probably been less obvious until now is the part that people play in making that happen for businesses and for sectors in Scotland. Um, and I think it is a fantastically timely just now because we've got a new uh, economic strategy, Scotland's economic strategy, and all the way through that, and the, the, the four key planks that we've got in there about how we're going to grow Scotland's economy, there's a really strong element of people and people's place in the workplace and how they can make workplaces much more vibrant and engaging places to be. What we have seen in the past has been, um, there's an element of the people bit there, but it's been looked at in quite a, a kind of one-dimensional fashion. It's been much more about um, acquiring qualifications or enabling people to enter into the workplace and not really thinking about people while they're actually in the workplace and the role that people can play in making workplaces much more interesting and engaging places to be, but much more innovative and ultimately much more successful. We've had a, an interest in the people element of being a great business and what makes a business uh, resilient and robust and what helps make a business grow. Um, we've done quite a lot of work in the past few years around that people element, but I think what we're looking at now with the new strategy coming out from government and the emerging trends, as I said, globally, um, is something which is a much stronger component and we are now looking at how it sits alongside things like investment, internationalisation and innovation as a kind of equal player rather than being a supporting factor. Well, I was really uh, delighted to join the advisory group because I've been interested in the role that individuals can play in organisations, whether they're businesses or public sector organisations. Um, and I've often felt that it's been the, the last thing in everybody's priority list when we've looked at it. So the opportunity to get together with like-minded public sector bodies and private sector bodies and academia was a great opportunity for me. It gave us the chance to come together for us to do something quite practical and for us all not just to be sitting about talking about how we should do something quite practical. And I think that's what we see in the report that's been produced there's some excellent case studies in there covering a really wide range of sectors that you might not think about when you start to think about uh, innovative workplaces. So you've got some excellent case studies in there from funeral directors all the way through to the use of robotics and dispensing in local pharmacies, um, as well as things that you probably would think more about, like creative industries and organisations who are exporting internationally. One of the biggest challenges for SMEs, um, compared to perhaps some of the, the kind of large corporates that might be doing this kind of thing, is finding time to fit it in alongside all of the other things that are competing priorities. I think one of the key challenges that SMEs face is how you choose which things are the priorities that you need to deal with. Um, and actually looking at this, initially I think SMEs will look at this as another thing that's added on rather than thinking about it as the thing that makes the rest of their business work really well. Um, so I guess there, it, that initial phase when people be start to adopt workplace innovation practices in the way that they work They'll be thinking about that as an additional thing to do as opposed to thinking about it's just how we do things that make this a successful and engaged workplace.